Hi guys, um, it's me, Queen, and we're back for a new episode on Just Another Rant, and we're doing this mini-series, Men, Why? And this is the second episode, and it's, it, uh, we're going to talk about education and like how feminism plays a role in that and vice versa, because mm -hmm. uh, we are very, very well-educated people, am I right? I would I mean, say yes to that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we 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 were once like students for the and you know we're in like the school for the gifted. So like we we can say that we're gifted students. We used oh my to be. God. <laughs> but what, I what's have... that supposed to mean? Like I just I I never got it. You know, like, yeah, like gifted. Yeah. Like at what? Like. Gifted student. Um. Anyways, that's not the point of this episode. Um. Maybe we can do a, an episode on that one. But I have my with me here. Please say hi. Hi. <laughs> so enthusiastic. But um. Yeah. I think we should start with our experience in school. Um. Really. Mm -hmm. How How um, was your experience? Well, I don't know. Like. Because okay, for people who don't know, I am a Vietnamese student, mm -hmm. and I've been in this um, Vietnamese in the um, education system forever, and I'm still in. Um, and my experience is, I would say, a little bit more rich than yours, because because mm -hmm. uh, now you're in the U.S. and you have been in the U.S. for like five years now. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. Yeah. And so when it comes to education and feminism, I feel like I have a lot to say. I just have a lot to say. Yeah. Um for sure. And but before we can say anything, I would I I would like to have a disclaimer. Mm -hmm. Always. Uh, mm -hmm. first of all, like we are Vietnamese, so our experiences are limited to that context and second of all we um we used to be in one of those high school for the gifted which is kind of elitist i was saying mm -hmm. um so our experiences are not the vietnamese exper experience you know what i mean and uh, it is the, the, the vietnamese but might it might not cover like the bulk of the of the experience that you yes. know regular well we're not regular students but like students from school that are not like from the gifted you know not the elitist mm -hmm. school yeah. yeah it's gonna be different so mm -hmm. just take our words with a grain of salt mm -hmm. uh, so with that out of the way i think we can begin yeah so when i you know when you uh come to me and propose this um topic i was like really excited mm -hmm. because i had so much to say about feminism in education system because i don't think like the vietnamese education system is doing enough if at all mm -hmm. uh uh it's not a very good job on educate at educating people on feminism, for example, um, I feel like, you know, peep students aren't educated at all on feminism mm -hmm. in school. I and mean, on the other hand, sexism is reinforced by yeah. literally everyone. And, mm -hmm. you know, talking about this, I think I can give you guys like some examples of like, for example, like when we were in high school mm -hmm. um like there are a lot of texts that we need to study for the um for the um Vietnamese subject. Yeah. and yeah but like a, and a lot of those texts you know can be interpreted from a feminist point of view mm -hmm. but they would somehow dodge it or completely ignore it or if they kind of touched it, it would be like, oh, like you see, like this, um, feel that, feel that, 
what, oh my god, I don't know how to say that in, in English, feudal um, system is like so evil mm -hmm. and we're not taught, but we wouldn't, we have, we have never taught about, we have never been taught about the word feminism or patriarchy or misogyny, things mm -hmm. like that, which yeah. is like such a bummer because like we can absolutely do that. It takes like five seconds to pronounce that word, right? right? Mm -hmm. And so it's also very unfortunate that like if we look at the text um, and the, the essay prompts that were given it for us to study for exams and like the essay prompts and exams as well, it's when it comes to like how um, a woman suffer under that time you know, and under you know the oppression of men, we did not the essay problems were not pointing the finger at the men or, you know, the system that is um, oppressing the women. The, the the essay problems were focusing on like, oh my God, please pity her. She had a really hard time. Like pity her and show us your compassion and empathy for her. And like, but not we're not we were not really criticizing who caused her pain, who caused to suffer. Yeah. Exactly. As if, like, mm, like, showing pity can somehow change the world, you know? Yeah. Like, it's kind pity. of ridiculous. Mm. Um, and, like, I think as far as education goes, like, you know, the students, like, from, from my experience, I'm sick of pity people because, like, I, my mom at home would want me to pity her. My grandma would want me to pity her. And now I'm going to school and I'm writing like a five page essay on pity another woman that, that doesn't even exist. Like that just doesn't really do anything as far as education for me. For me, like I didn't really learn anything. Um, well, maybe I learned how to um, write a five page essay about something I'm not passionate about. So that helped a lot. Um, but other than that, I like there were not that there's there's a lack of um, like real material that that I could get could benefit from. Yeah, mm -hmm. kind of sad. And on top of that, I feel like sexism is reinforced very heavily mm -hmm. by teachers, by students, yeah, mm -hmm. by em technically everyone. Like, and you can see this very well in the um, the difference between male versus female student experience in school. It's right. like nine day. Yeah. Nine day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like the girls are expected to behave um, a, a certain way. And like, first of all, the dress code is crazy. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, for girls, we have to like have a like a skirt um a certain length. We have to have our hair a certain way. Um, sometimes people let that slide, but usually, and uh, not. And like we gotta, you know, we we cannot run around. Like, we have like we have to wear out. Oh, yeah, come on. Like what the fuck is that? Like I love tradition. But not the oh yeah when you go to school and it's summer and it's everyone is sweating and it's disgusting. And yeah, and boys are like they just wear pants and a shirt. Like that's it's like ultra comfortable. It's like as close to um pajama as possible. Okay. And <laughs> I am totally here for that. Like, can we do that? Um we have to wear oh yeah, like or then we have to wear a skirt. I know it's pretty, but like it's not very functional. And not to talk about um, the boys preying on us, like um, you know, trying to, to look into our skirts, like look under it and shit, like. And that is just messed up. First of all, the dress code and um, girls are also expected to behave a certain way. Like uh, we shouldn't be super active and run around because mm -hmm. girls are not supposed to do that that's not very feminine uh we're not supposed to like eat um the way we want we have to be like you know small bites we have to yeah <laughs> and 
it's just kind of stupid and and every time we just do something that is not in that box um people teacher would criticize us and be like oh you're a girl you shouldn't you shouldn't do that that's not very feminine that's not, and nobody would like you or something like that and i think that's messed up and yeah no, i literally no. had like one teacher something mm -hmm. well was not my teacher but you know rumors spread um he literally told the mm -hmm. entire class that if you're a girl, mm -hmm. you cannot let like water dripping down your throat because that is going to distract the boys. Like, what the, what the fuck? fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is that? Like, that's so weird. Like, just the amount of yeah control like, over the female's body. Is that just, is straight up sexualizing your students you know yeah. that is not acceptable mm. right like and we're talking about like students what children like yeah. we're talking about children here yeah like, if, middle school sorry, like, like if you are 13 if you are 14 if you're 15 you are a kid to me yeah that children I'm sorry yeah <laughs> barely even a teenager but yeah, it's like, and also like, um, yeah, but when I come here, the distracting the boys notion, it does exist here as well. Um, yeah, I went to two high schools when, uh, during uh, the, the only two years that I was in high school here. And um, yeah, the distracting the boys were, were there. And especially um, when I was, when I went to the Christian high school, it was um, enforced stronger. So that's, mm -hmm. yeah, that's kind of messed up. I'm glad that people are speaking about it now. I see it on Twitter. I see it on Instagram and stuff, but I don't see anybody talking about it in Vietnam. Like, um, and this is kind of linked to what we talked about in our first episode, which is the toxic male culture. And, you know, it started very young, from around the age when boys enter puberty, so mm -hmm. middle school. Mm -hmm. And the problematic thing is that it's not called out by the teacher. Like, right. for example, like if you see a bunch of boys like talking about girls in a lewd way, in a weird sexualized way, like, I would not. Like, I would not have that. Like, that's gross. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so gross. But people actively ignore that, I think. Yeah. And by doing so, they participate in the oppression of women. Right. And also the control over the female body. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very messed up. If you are an educator, mm -hmm. you should be as well educated about um, feminism right. um, and patriarchy and stuff yeah. um, because it's, it's a big topic that we need to discuss more right um, yeah like and the you know like I'm not gonna okay I, I know if this is a little bit too much but I'm gonna call like those creepy behaviors that boys students um, had toward girls mm -hmm. I would call it sexual harassment, oh, or yeah. at least very inappropriate, very yeah. inappropriate behaviors. Yeah, very inappropriate. And the fact that it's not called out kind of a proof, kind of a proof um, that behavior, yeah. that kind of behavior. I think, and these guys will like grow up to be like men someday. Yeah, and they will focus that male gaze, and they're gonna project that male gaze onto women of all ages and that is so dangerous and if we don't yeah. stop that from school and we don't educate people early on from school like there's very little chance that they're going to change right and i think usually a school people just say oh that's how boys are they like, yeah they will grow out of it eventually they will grow up and they know to do better eventually well they don't they don't fucking do anything they okay don't. they don't do better and 
it is very, very like problematic to just say, oh, that's how men are. That's how boys are at right. this age and time, because like then you are allowing them to be like that and nothing mm -hmm. is fixed. Um, and also girls at school, teenage girls are very sensitive. We are very sensitive. We are very easily embarrassed. And I think like when we are, um, let's say harassed um, by boys, uh, whether how, how you take it, I would call that harassment. But um, mm -hmm. when we are harassed, um, we are very shy. We don't usually speak up because we're embarrassed um, that our body is objectified and sex, um, sexualized. So we don't really talk about it. We talk to each other, but we, like usually we wouldn't take it up to like the teacher because the teacher would take it lightly. Like we're like, oh, you should to just you know, just tell the boys like, oh, don't do that next time. You know, like mm -hmm. of course they're gonna do it next time. Like. Yeah, there's got to be some kind of like real enforcement to stop that. Like, there's got to be like a whole movement or something. I don't know, whatever it takes to stop yeah. it. It's just ridiculous. Like the, the way people treat boys, students and girls, students mm -hmm. are to me, like it's it just crazy to me that, you know, uh, when boys are being like that, like people would tell girls, oh, they're just boys, you know, boys mature uh, a bit later than girls, you know, so they yeah. sympathize with them or something. But like, I wouldn't, I never heard anyone say to boys that, well, girls mature faster than you. So maybe look at them as like role yeah, models or something like that. And but nobody would say you, that. Don't you think because of the boys preying on us, we have to mature faster to protect ourselves. Isn't that one of the costs? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I, I mean, like, I maybe like, research on that, but that's plausible. That yeah, sounds that sounds possible. Maybe, like, scientifically, you know, like, medically, we um, we do mature faster. We, you know, we hit puberty oh, faster. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. But, but I think, like, yeah, maybe, like, the, the feeling of being preyed on, um, does contribute to like oh growing faster and and sooner than boys maybe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i think so yeah yeah that's that sounds plausible i'm not gonna say like that is the truth that is the fact but that sounds you know plausible to me yeah we might need to collect some stat statistics to do this um <laughs> <laughs> okay let's talk about you know the program that, that were given to us in school. So I'm going to talk about the program that was, that was given to me when I was, well, I am still Vietnam, when I was in when high school, were, okay? Okay. Right. So a lot of the time, um, like when we talk about feminism, that is a social issue, right? Mm -hmm. And the only class where social issues are brought up um, is you know, literature. And yeah. we would discuss like like a bunch of like, weird stuff, but nobody, nobody would bring up feminism, patriarchy, sexism, and mm -hmm. talk and teach uh, the, the, the students about that and have a discussion about that. Nobody, yeah. nobody would. Like yeah. even though like we have, we have had like so so many good opportunities to do this yeah right? mm -hmm. but most of the time it fell flat because either the teacher doesn't even know about anything about feminism or it's just not something that is going to help the student to yeah. get good grades and that is what i want to focus on mm -hmm. because right. the, it's really hard it's really hard to um, incorporate feminist content into um, our program because this the, the system is done in a certain way that it prioritizes not education but getting good grades and graduate with like flying schools something like that. Yeah, and it's 
and I, I'm going to say this again, like, somehow for me, school was kind of in the way of my education. Right. And I feel like if, and, and I feel like for a lot of people, like school is not really about education as well. Yeah. It's about getting good grades. It's about yeah. getting to this university. And it's just a vicious cycle. It repeats and repeats itself. And yeah, um, yeah like it, which makes it so hard to, to bring um, to bring on any kind of change, you know? Yeah, to bring in anything, like any progressive movement, make people more aware of it. And also, I think um, most of the education that we, that I had, it's actually out of school, <laughs> like YouTube right. and, and the internet. But school is just like, I, I think when it was in Vietnam and also when I was in U the U.S. at the beginning, it was just like, I'm just here for the grades, okay? I'm going to get them good grades so that my parents wouldn't, like, complain about anything. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's kind of sad that it's also the system is built that way. Like, you, they, that's why, like, a lot of the um, texts, a lot of the material are very outdated. A lot mm -hmm. of it, when it comes to women it's about like women in wars and like like they're not breaking any gender roles it's just like they're in the gender roles and they're suffering so pity they're suffer and like that's it like there's no progress there's yeah basically and, like let's pray the pain away let's yeah. pray like, yeah. and it's so weird that we're teaching this to students mm -hmm. and on the other hand, like people expect, you know, high school students or middle school students to have these amazing ideas, to be super creative, to be like all the things. Whereas, yeah. like you, this is what you you're teaching the students. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, doesn't yeah. really make sense to me. Yeah. Um, but I think like anything yeah. about human rights are taken are taken very lightly in Vietnam. Usually. Yeah, I don't know why. It's weird. And it's like, um, it's, it has to be something on the extreme. Like, someone is, like, is killed. Someone is murdered. Like, that is when people are like, oh, I, I pity that person. Like, oh, my God, that's too bad. Like, that's the attitude that, mm -hmm. that's translated that from the uh, system. It's like, oh, pity. Yeah, the, the pity just keeps going. But, like, nobody is like, I want to know more. I want to, I want to look at the bigger picture like no one is like that because the pity is just like a small thing like you pity them but you're not doing anything like it's basically you're just talking about it and you don't mean it so don't speak about it be about it you know like it's that's the point and okay i, I know this might this might be a hot take but i feel like like for for example, Palestine, for example, people don't even pity the victim anymore. People only do that as mm -hmm. long as it gives them grades, mm -hmm. you know. And speaking about grades and how it and how grades are bad for education, mm -hmm. like I watched this amazing video by this. Um, teacher i'm gonna leave um the link down below mm -hmm. um it is called grading is a scam yeah and motivation is a myth a professor mm -hmm. explained and it was so so good like watch it and you will understand why we're doing everything wrong completely yeah. wrong like the moment that you introduce grading into educational system that is getting in the way of people getting an, a real education, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm um, not gonna talk about that, but check out a video. Yeah. And um, yeah, like I feel like when I was, this is like, can f it's very powerful, but you can just see and you can just feel that like when I was in high school, I, I, when I was in my last year mm -hmm. of high school, mm -hmm. um, everyone were, everyone was just focusing on you know, uh, scam studying for the big exam, you know, 
because right. that's what they need yeah, to yeah, go yeah. to the school. Mm-hmm. They don't mm-hmm. need they don't need education. They just right. don't. They just need that number. They need that grade. They need that score. That's it. Yeah. It's not about education. So that's why when I see people brag about you know their um, their grades, mm-hmm. it's a little bit cringy for me. It's always it's so cringy. cringe. It's so cringe. Yeah, especially if you are in high school because it doesn't really mean much to me. Yeah, it doesn't really mean anything. Um, yeah, but I think like okay, I know we're like criticizing the system and the, the educator or whatever a lot. But I have to, but I do think that you know it's really tricky for the teachers as well. Like maybe some of them or a lot of them are passionate about certain things, certain movement certain you know human rights and they want to incorporate that into the program but because of the system they cannot really effectively put that in because they have to make sure that the the students grades are good right right so if if they're not doing what the system wants them to do then the grades of the students are not going to be good and um, that's a big problem because everybody goes to school for good grades i mean that's the whole point that's the not everybody goes to school for good grades but the point is like you're, you're getting good grades like that's the goal mm-hmm. of this journey right. so that's hard for the teachers that's hard for like i know it's hard for the students but that's so so, so hard for the teachers as well because yeah. when you are so underpaid oh my god yeah like which is the case for vietnamese teachers mm-hmm. i think uh, when you are so underpaid, like where, is, like where can you find the motivation to do all of this? Like it takes a lot to prepare the content, to prepare your lessons, to you know go and do the photocopies. Like it takes a lot of time, and you know they already are doing so much, you know to, uh, like the, they they have to create, they have to teach. They have to attend meetings, and I feel like teachers need to be paid more, especially in Vietnam. They need to yeah. have all have a raise. Oh my god! Yeah, you think the teachers in the U.S. are underpaid? Oh, honey, look at the teachers in Vietnam. They, I think like they cannot survive. Like they cannot even cover the basis of their living cost just on the salary that the school paying them. That's why they need to open like extra classes for the students to come and like study. Like that's, that's broken. They like, just kind of yeah. stupid. But that's the system and like teachers are underpaid and like, are we really asking too much from them when they are this underpaid? Like, do we really, really want to make them do more work? And are the students willing to accept those work and appreciate that you know that's a big yeah. problem I like, don't know. it's so yeah it's so complicated and everything just are just intertwined you know like yeah. every problems in this you know piece of puzzle are mm-hmm. intertwined so much that you cannot you cannot solve one without yeah. solving the other but I think first thing first, if you pay the teachers better, I'm sure they're going to be more passionate about their yeah. job as an educator and like change will start happening because like you're paying them too little and you're asking from them too much. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And it's like got to yeah. start from that, I think. So um, talking about a program, I feel like one thing that I want to add is that uh, a lot of it are so outdated mm-hmm. that it's not even it's, it's not even scientific correct anymore. And I know that I know they personally a lot of um, well not a lot but a few teachers from our school from mm-hmm. our high school mm-hmm. they wrote letters to the Ministry of Education. Mm-hmm. and demand change mm-hmm. but like they they never got a response yeah. so we definitely have we have no sh- yeah i 
it's just weird. Okay. Education, they're here for grades. Yeah. Yes. And, and like, yeah. also, like, it's every time some change happens, it's always like a, a male, like a man doing that. And like he he just put out like some stupid like new policies, and usually it's about like grading and how the the exams are graded. It's not about the content, the material that we're learning. So we yeah. know, where are we getting with that? Like okay, grading are grading sucks, but if you want to make a change, do not change the grading for it. Change the material. Do something. You know that's that's just. It's more efficient. But I also think that this, I don't know if the, the, the change is what will be um, well received by the students. Because if you think about it, like we, um, the way we learn, especially um, with li literature, is that we have like a, a study guide, a template. And as long as we cover exactly what's on the study guide or the template we would ensure like a safe grade maybe not good but like safe and like it's been like that for 12 years of, of education and we get really used to it and we kind of know our way at the end of it so mm -hmm. that's really easy well it's more easy for us um but if we introduce new material and we we want to encourage like real learning um the uh the the students would have to struggle to adjust to that and i don't think mm -hmm. it, with the mindset of like oh i want good grades you know like the struggle um that they will experience from the the, the progressive change um they they would not receive it well they would not like it and they would be like oh my god like this stupid things are they, is it really, are we really ever going to use it in real life? Like the, the kind of um, notion that's really popular amongst um, many yeah. students. Yeah. And I think, you know, more simply put, I would say that we are so used to fake learning mm -hmm. that we are incapable of really learn anymore. And that's really sad. Um, yeah, but you know, education, at least in my definition, mm -hmm. is not just what you do in school, right. it's also what you do outside of school, right? And you know, this is where I educate myself the most, right? And I, I think it's this, it's also the case for you and a lot of other people, mm -hmm. so I would like to talk at length about this. Yeah. Um, so first of all, when you think of education outside of school, what, what does that mean, right? I yeah. think of, you know, social media. I think of traditional media, which is like television, you have series, you have like shows, you have um, um, books, you have like um, theaters, etc. Yeah. Uh, and I want to focus, first of all, on traditional media because I don't know, I just want to. Um, <laughs> and since I'm not super well-versed um, on this matter, I'm gonna, you know, uh, let yeah. you leave. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna so, cover this part. The thing yeah. is, like, I don't, um, I don't really watch a lot of traditional media in Vietnam. Um, I don't have a TV. And when I was in Vietnam, I didn't really watch TV, but my mom loves it. So she sends me stuff. And uh, the shit up there, like the shit on the, the traditional media, like it's, it's not great, okay? We have shows. Um, what was the name of the show? Oh my God, is, is it Ngui Biang or something? I don't know. I don't know. Like, Ngui Ai La Ai, apparently. Oh, Ngui Ai La Ai, okay, yeah, that <laughs> one. Um, so the show is like basically... Um, we're gonna have like um, celebrity guest and we're gonna have like a girl usually the girl yeah sitting there and they will 
and they will have like candidates. It kind of like The Bachelor, right? Like, but like, Mm -hmm. yeah, but yeah, then, kind of like that. But uh, yeah, so like they they will have like candidates, and um, some some in that are like uh, are straight, some are not, and they have to guess who are straight, who who isn't, and like find like a the perfect quote unquote match for the girl. And it is incredibly popular, I think. Like there are like million views and like memes taken out of that and like the share and likes are just some crazy ass shit because the celebrities are like very famous in Vietnam. But like it's just it's reinforced sexism, it's reinforces like homophobia, transphobia, misogyny, all of that. But people take it very lightly because it's funny. It's a comedy. It's supposed to be like hearted. It's supposed to be, you know, something that you watch for entertainment only. And mm-hmm. um, and I do think that you know people take it lightly. Like maybe it's not like full on uh, homophobia or sexism, but it's it's the nuance. It's the little things that really gets into your head day by day. And it's like with how much it is being shared and like loved by the public, um, the sexism, the, the, the including like all of the wrong things that comes with it, um, it's, it's really being popularized and normalized. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't think that you can, uh, you can be homophobic and not be sexist and not be misogynistic. Like, I, I don't think it's possible. And I, I think it's impossible. And if you are capable of pointing your finger at a man acting kind of in a effeminate way mm-hmm. and make fun of him mm-hmm. and think it's funny or something like that, uh, that is homophobic. And I don't think you can be homophobic and not sexist and not misogynistic right. because the discomfort and the disgust of people for um, like effeminate men mm-hmm. are rooted in this are rooted in sexism and mm-hmm. patriarchy yeah and it's, it's honestly I cannot watch it mm-hmm. but the fact that a lot of people not only watch it but enjoy that and not seeing any problematic not seeing anything problematic in it, like that's very worrying to me. Yeah. Um, like I think I've seen one blog post by this one activist um, mm-hmm. um, criticizing that show, mm-hmm. but apart from that, like you don't really see anything. But it doesn't create like it didn't create like a wave, right? It didn't. Right. Like, yeah. Like nobody really shared and liked it. Like that much yeah because he wrote how popular he wrote it in, on like blog posts or something so yeah. it's not on facebook so people don't really care about it mm-hmm. it's just like it's also whenever any kind of activism um is done it's especially like calling out problematic behaviors on of, of like celebrities or shows um people are like I mean, yeah, these activists are like just like over dramatic. Like they're overreacting. It's just comedy. Like don't take it too seriously. Like I just, I hate it so much. With like masking problematic behavior with a good laugh, and call it a day. And like, not to mention, capitalizing on marginalized people, because like, basically, you know, like they're you're showcasing them, and make fun of them. And, just and like the show is making a lot of money and the celebrities are being paid a lot so like that is just like i would say like inhumane like that's just like not like morally wrong okay yes definitely like if you do that better give us like your money better give us some of your money yeah like i would not have it like why don't we you know redistribute like the wealth you know, to marginalized groups. Um, I just, like, don't think it's appropriate mm-hmm. for you to take, like, the pain and the struggle and the yeah. coping mechanism, mm-hmm. etc., of the of a marginalized 
group and capitalize it yeah. on their heads, you know, and yeah. it's, it's, it's just wrong to me. And um, like, I'm know. sure they are paid. I'm sure they are paid, but like not even like a fraction of the of the money that this celebrity yeah, but like, paid. But yeah, but like, are the like is the community paid? Yeah, you know, you pay one person, mm. but you you are hurting. You taking things from yeah. the whole community, right? And you are making money out of it. So you better pay. So you better pay the whole community like yeah and like i i'm sure someone was gonna be like well then if you don't like it don't appear on the show but like i'm sure like the 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 people that appears on the show have their own reasons right maybe they need the money and maybe, maybe like they, they they don't really see a problem because they are marginalized and they have less chance to be educated on feminism yeah homophobia. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah 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 and i think that's, that's most likely the case yeah. they, i'm pretty sure they don't really they don't get paid well or maybe you know they need the exposure like the media exposure so for their career if they want to get into show bits or something that would be a, yeah. a plausible I reason i don't know how media possible works. Yeah, but like that's possible because like showbiz are complicated, and any exposure you get to the public, it's probably worth it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. and I think in this case, it's especially egregious, like this show, because mm -hmm. you know, humor, especially dark humor or self-deprecating humor mm -hmm. for the LGBTQ plus community. Mm -hmm. is a coping mechanism yeah. right because yeah. when oh when i uh if i already make fun of myself if the, the other people make fun of me they just say uh, doesn't, yeah. it, it, doesn't yeah. count, it doesn't yeah, count just, it doesn't it, right, doesn't it doesn't count hurt. right yeah I, I it would hurt me less you know yeah because so i already it is made fun of a me. coping mechanism yeah it's a coping mechanism mm -hmm. and when you know the, uh, for example, the gay people joke about their gayness uh, amongst each other. Mm -hmm. It's dark humor. Is you know because you cannot do anything in this like dark uh, situation. You twist it into something laughable, and you know that 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 helps you live another day. Yeah. And I think it's so gross that you can look at that and you say, "Oh, this is gonna be okay for me." Uh, a cis head, cis head person to mm. capitalize on. Yeah. Like, no, absolutely no. Like, you cannot, like, for example, a gay man can uh, like, make fun of his, like, gayness, right? Yeah. And that's going to be okay. That's okay. But if you are cis head and you do that, mm -hmm. no, it's not. And especially if you capitalize, if you normalize that, um, behavior and mm -hmm. on top of that you capitalize that to make money for you right that is inhumane like, that's not ethical yeah that's unethical and like like yeah it's just so messed up it's just, traditional media needs a lot of work I, like i don't even consume it that much and i know it's bad like the stuff that i i've seen Oh my god! Like I don't even know how is that even how is that like appropriate to showcase to that many people? And then like a lot of the jokes are very sexist. Like, a lot of the jokes are really? like it's it's in Vietnamese, so I cannot translate it fully to English. But a lot of the jokes are inappropriate. And, like a lot of the time, they make fun of the women's body. Like body shaming is a big thing on um on on traditional media either they think it's like so funny um and just oh my god and it would not be um allowed here i think like not that the u.s is like that much better but we're like it's talked about a lot more but in vietnam um people still still eat that shit up like people, people still think that's okay and it's it is so not okay yeah. oh and one of the reasons why like 
why they consume that uh, content and not seeing anything problematic in that is because they are not educated about feminism in school. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But it's a whole cycle, you know? Mm -hmm. It's a whole vicious cycle. Yes, and, you know, like we, we talk, we've been talking a lot about, you know, homophobia, transphobia on um, um, traditional media in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Not because we are like stepping out of lane because we're talking about feminism here, but because I personally think you cannot solve feminism without mm -hmm. solving homophobia, misogyny, right. uh, transphobia, etc. Yeah, yeah. It, it's all linked together. It's 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 all in, intermingled somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, and uh, I feel like not. I feel like this is not just Vietnam. I feel like other countries have this problem as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, some countries are more inclined, are more prone to call it out. Right. Okay. Yeah. Another thing is like social media. Social media is big because like I'm, I, I think it it is safe to say that social media is kind of taking over traditional media. Like, mm -hmm. oh, definitely. TV is already like on the way out. You know, maybe in 10 years, like you will not you will not see the TVs anymore. It will be just like laptops or I don't know, some crazy tech technology, but social media is super big. And I feel like a lot of the stuff on social media are like just great for education purpose. And a lot of the stuff are just like the total opposite, like the the worst of the worst because people feel like oh they can talk anything on social media and they can get away with it because it's the it's the internet you know and nobody really knows anybody mm -hmm. um and like these the but for the, the educational content they for example you know like the the so you can so you want to talk about or should you should care about pages uh, in Vietnam, we have a couple pages like um, Viet for Change, Viet Activism. Uh, or Viet Fem. Yeah, Viet Fem, those pages. Like, uh, you got to know about them and you got to want to learn about it. And they, like, you know, it's done upon self interest. But like the people are interested are already like have some kind of education and the people who have no idea what feminism is, they also don't want to know about it. Right. Because, yeah. you know, the social media, especially when we talk about like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, mm -hmm. are built on the algorithm, right? Yeah. And if you are not interested in feminism, mm -hmm. then you would not suggest feminist content to you. Like that's just it. If you're not interested in social issues, making the world a better place, um, or you know, environmental issues, etc., then mm -hmm. it would not suggest it to you. Um, and a lot of people in Vietnam, I feel like there is this deep lack of interest. In, not just in feminism, but in just learning about the world, learning about society, learning about anything. Like they use, the way that they use social media is like so different to me. Like I need social media to distract myself as well. I need something fun to watch. But at the same time, I use social media as a way to learn, to educate myself. And I really try to go out of my way to do that. But for a lot of people, especially in Vietnam, they, it's just, you know, something that they use for fun. And, you know, reading about feminism is probably not very fun. Yeah. And this lack of interest in feminism in particular, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think is especially prevalent among men. Right. I feel like, like for example, like, Mm -hmm. um. 
a male feminist, and I, I don't think it's a coincidence yeah. that we are women. Right. I don't think it's a coincidence that the only feminist in my life that I know, including myself, are women. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I just, I, well, I know like one male feminist, that's it, uh, in real life. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that's wow, okay. <laughs> but that's yeah, great it. for you. But but is he Vietnamese? No, no, no. He is uh, American, okay, so... Canadian. <laughs> or, okay, I don't know, like American. Um, yeah. Um. But yeah. And also, um, shameless plug, Jack Tweemiu anti-feminist post. We've talked about it. You know, like one of the more recent episodes. We talk about that. If you have not, the- yeah, if you have not listened to it, uh, definitely give it a listen. Uh, it's it was like kind of fun. We made fun of her, um, yeah. and she deserved every single shit that she gets. And you know, and we will we'll link it down below. But uh, yeah, the point is like if you look at those kind of posts. There are two spectrums, like the people, uh, there are two extremes, like the people who are really anti-feminist and the people who are very passionate about feminism. And the people, unfortunately, they like the activists, the feminist act, the feminists are just like, there are just very few of them. Um, We, yeah, and like, we didn't really- And mostly just women. Yeah, mostly just women. And men are just like this. See, this, those words are coming from a woman. Um, it's your okay. privilege. You know, like, fuck feminists. They, whatever. And yeah, messed up, messed up. Like, I really think with how celebrities are in Vietnam, like, they really need to go to school. Like, they need proper education oh, or something. Me too. Like, like no no more of those like dropping out of school to do your little dance and singing thing or com- comedy thing please go to school please educate yourself because you have such a big sphere of influence like the, i'm not saying it's like a cult but they are like definitely influencers they are huge influencers and mm-hmm. yeah like can they just yeah. do better like don't just there for the money or for the singing like be there to 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 you know advocate for something that is like Um, yeah that's much better than just there for the money i don't know like that sounds like rich people i don't know how rich people live i probably will never know (laughs) can you imagine us being rich oh oh god but yeah Uh, like I can, you know, there are like reason. Like I can sympathize. I can understand, like where this lack of interest in feminism among men mm-hmm. is coming from. Like mm-hmm. first of all, the education system, as we talked about mm-hmm. earlier, mm-hmm. You know, it does not educate people on feminism. So how do you expect, you know? men to know about to 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 be interested about them in, in feminism yeah. if you don't teach them from a young age if you never mention it in high school and you never mention it in school at all mm-hmm. second of all is the environment so we have to talk about this you know Vietnam is a country that's gone out of the war just like 40 50 years ago and you know it whereas you know for a lot of other countries they had like the feminist movement mm-hmm. happening mm-hmm. during that time, during the, the, the time that we um, we had to deal with the war. Mm-hmm. So in a lot of countries, they are way, way ahead of us when it comes to feminism, when it comes to a uh, women's issue, right? Yeah, yeah. But that, so, uh, so, 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 but like, I can understand the reason for this lack of interest, but that is not an excuse because I think if you are like the group that benefits from our um, oppression, you should have like, some sort of responsibility to go out of your way to, 
make the world a better place for everyone, including you. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I don't think men, especially Vietnamese men, are doing that. And the sad right. thing is that the 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 education system and the media are actively telling them I that mean, like, is is okay whole, to do oh, that. Yeah, the system fucked it up for like both men and women, but like women, um, you know, like because they have to protect themselves. I think they are a bit like usually more educated than Vietnamese men on this um, movement. And like, also if you think about it, like this sc mm, school doesn't really encourage um, learning. So people don't want to learn. So really? like, why would they even be there? Like, why would they even, you know, search feminism online when they can just search cat videos? Not slandering <laughs> cat videos because okay. I love cat videos. Um, I search for cat videos, but like, you know what I mean? That's the point. Is that like, yeah, 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 yeah. And it explains. It just explains so well men's attitude when it comes to online activism. I don't yeah. think men are doing anything when it comes to activism, online mm -hmm. activism, especially because your know, online activism is like so easy. You know, yeah, you can share it. it. Is, like, you can just share it, and you can just talk about it. You don't have to go to a strike. You don't have to wear a certain costume, uh, design a, a certain poster to protest or anything. You just need to speak about it. You just need to um, write um, a caption or something like that. And men are not doing that. Not to say that every man is like that, but mm -hmm. at least men in my circle, in our circle, definitely are not doing enough and we're talking about you Vietnamese men um yeah can we reach a conclusion for this because like that is, this is such a big problem the more I we know. talk about it the more wrong things uh unfold and like it right. become like a big fucking mess but I think conclusion is that first of all, we're not formally educated about feminism or any human rights movement um, for mm -hmm. that matter. Like really nothing. We're educated about how to get good grades and little little things here and there, like, you know, little science or English, whatever, like minor things, not big shit. And also we're not encouraged. I don't think um, school really encourages us to to you know want to learn more or strive to to reach like real education so that and like um outside of school social media and traditional media really enforces sexism and exogeny um mm -hmm. and yeah it's just messed up and celebrities please do better please go to school please i don't know search shit up online please do something or at least you know what don't do the stupid shit you do don't just post um like directly me post some <laughs> anti-feminist okay. post like that yeah it's not helping because you're you're in an incredibly privileged position and you're taking people's struggle capitalizing on it and you know just yeah no no please don't do that do you have anything mm -hmm. else um, I just want to say one last word to the women, mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, this is for us, you know, mm -hmm. I think as women, we just don't, especially as feminist women, we don't have the obligation to educate men. Just remember that you don't have that obligation like, at all. Yeah. No. Mm. And Men, as the group that benefits from our oppression, should assume some sort of responsibility of educating themselves on feminism, on yeah. women's rights, mm -hmm. on why are they such a disappointment to me, to you, to us, um, 
and yeah, like I feel like men, like again, I'm gonna I, I reiterating myself a little bit, but um, just as I uh, said in the last episode, uh, like women can do whatever they they want. Feminists can you know uh, create content as much as they want, but if like fifty percent of this of the population does not act, does not engage, does not actively uh, do the work, do the reading, yeah. etc. We would n never come to an equal right. society yeah. where men and women have the same opportunities and none are oppressed by another, you know? Yeah, and also like Honestly, educating yourself on the matter is the bare minimum. It's right. not even like you're not really changing anything if you're just educating. Well, you're changing yourself, but like you're not yeah. actively advocating. Like educating is the bare minimum. What's but I do think you know, like once you're educated, you would do something because this shit is messed up. I don't think anybody would like, you know, like this mm -hmm. very standard uh, yeah. morals can can really tolerate the shit if they truly educate themselves properly. Yeah, I think, you know, knowledge is power. Like, the more you know, the more you educate yourself, Yeah. like, the you better mm -hmm. you become right. like, as a person, you know. Yeah. Our parents are wrong about many things, but uh, when they say knowledge is power, even though they might not mean it the right way, it is true. They are right about that. Yes. Yeah. Knowledge is power. Remember mm -hmm. that. Stay in school. Um, I'm talking <laughs> to you, celebrities. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're going to end this with a few recommendations. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave down the um, video that I talked about below. And it's such a good video. I know it's, it's an hour long. I know. But you, everyone, just watch it. Like, it will just edify you, your your view, your perception of grading and the education system so, so, so much. Um, I will also leave um, a link to um, the book that I read um, for this episode. Mm -hmm. And it's called, oh, it's too far away. I don't remember what it's called, but it's basically feminist writings, feminist articles from the early 20th century in mm -hmm. the south of Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And it's written by this one guy. And um, that is just like the proof of, you know, the feminist movement um, in Vietnam like from a very, very young, a very, very early um, phase. Yeah. Yeah, very early. So, so this is just the proof that this is not something, you know, um, reason yeah. for a very long time we have talked about this and for some reason we forgot everything yeah. about like this movement in yeah. Vietnam. Um, also I would like to leave down the accounts, the Insta account we mentioned mm -hmm. or yeah. recommend down below and, yeah. and you really should check them out. A lot of them are in, Vin in Vietnamese mm -hmm. um, so um, I hope that will make it more accessible to everyone. Um, I would also leave down um, a few books um, or TED talk uh, about feminism um, yeah. down below. Mm -hmm. uh, See, the effort. We're really trying to educate you here. You know, like we're really sticking to the episode title. Yeah. Okay. So that concludes our um, second episode mm -hmm. of the series, Men, Why? Yeah. Um, and next episode is going to be the last episode and stay tuned for that because it is about uh, it's going to be about calling people out yeah and that is you know a very um big issue that we yeah want and also i mean it's more there's more drama involved and i think people like drama oh I yeah think this episode has been like kind of heavy usually it also the first episode was kind of heavy usually we do just like rant we do like lighthearted content this one has been um has been kind of heavy 
uh, we 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 might come out as angry at some point because mm-hmm. we are. But yeah, the next episode there's gonna be drama involved. There's gonna be like traumas, like personal traumas involved. Yes. So I mean, that sounds really fun. Yeah, don't know about it, but I, that sounds fun. I want to hear about people's dramas. I want to hear about dramas. I want to know the beef, who spilled the milk, who spilled the tea. <laughs> what? The- <laughs> okay, for that shit. Okay, so stay tuned and have a good day. Yeah. Bye.